Hi, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to your second session in this corporate finance program. Presumably you've seen the previous session's video where we discussed what is corporate finance, why is it used, who uses it, where is corporate finance used, and we even spent some time looking at the life cycle of a company and we talked about how specific decisions are objectively made in the life cycle of a company using the assistance of corporate finance. Now, if you're back here after listening to that video, you probably thought this is worth your time. You want to take this to the next level and learn a little more about the technical details of corporate finance. I'm going to try my best not to let, not let you down and you know, hopefully live up to your expectations. But if you still have questions at the end of the session, feel free to contact me. You will see a contact faculty button in your course page and feel free to click that and I will answer your question uh, as soon as possible. So, constantly in your career as a corporate finance analyst or as an investment banker, you're going to be constantly called upon to analyze a company, to review a company, and to, and to give your expert opinion on the operational the operations of a company in, in terms of how is a company's revenue comparing comparing to its competitors how, how is a company's expenses doing are they spending too much money on marketing are they spending too less money on product development uh, how is this company profitable is it very profitable or is it not too profitable why is it not profitable why is this company making a loss so you're going to be constantly answering questions like this at your job or even it's, it's a great skill to know even outside your job just to just to roughly read what the stock market is all about so all investment professionals to answer questions like that questions like what I just laid out always turn towards this specific financial instrument called an income statement otherwise called as a profit or a loss statement now that is going to be the focus of our course today. We're going to talk about what is an income statement. The goal of our course today is the income statement. We're going to talk about what is the income statement, what are the different components of an income statement, why is it used, how is it used, and all through the session, it's going to be a short session. So all through the session, we are going to build an income statement as we go forward so we understand the practical application of it and not just the definition or anything like that. So, you probably remember while you were, uh, I don't know, maybe if you're like me, a lot of people probably tell you, especially parents, they tell you, write down your expense, write down your monthly expenses so that you know how to plan your expenses better, so you can save money better, so you can reallocate expenses going forward, uh, and, and all of that. And, and typically, what would something like that look? You know, if, if I had a monthly expense book for, let us say, October 2011 I'll say your salary is 1 lakh rupees okay and then your expenses yeah what, what are big of expenses let's say rent you live in a nice two bedroom apartment in a reasonable city you pay 20,000 rupees a month on rent uh, and then let's say food or otherwise eating outside a lot and you're probably spending 10,000 rupees a month on food and hanging out with friends. Uh, petrol, especially now given all the price hikes, you probably, let's say, spend 7,000 rupees on petrol. And let's say you're also, you also bought a flat recently and you're paying down the uh, loan on that, you're paying 35,000 rupees as EMI. And obviously, you get, the, you get the idea, right? There's gonna be more expenses down the line. But for the purpose of this, we're just gonna stop right here. And we're gonna calculate what your monthly expense is for October 2011 there you go 72,000 rupees is your monthly expense in October 2000 in October 2011 so so evidently right it is very obvious what is the uh, benefit of doing something like this every month you can look up and you say hey see I think I, I've spent 10 percentage of my income on food I, I i've spent 35 percentage of my income on paying down my emi so next month maybe i want to save more money here i want to save seventy five thousand rupees so i'm going to cut down three thousand rupees on eating outside so it's, so it's helpful i don't do it but it, it, it's really helpful now similarly and before we get to the company aspect of it what we essentially have here is your own little income statement revenue which is your salary that's your money coming inside 
revenue minus what is this your expenses that's the money that you're spending that's going outside revenue minus expenses is equal to a profit or a loss so you know you've been a well-planned spender so you don't have a loss you're actually um, you know you're, you're actually saving you're actually saving one lakh minus seventy two thousand which is twenty eight thousand so you're actually saving money you don't need a loan to go buy so and essentially right there that is your basic income statement revenue minus expenses is equal to profit profit or a loss is your basic income statement right there now if it's, it's, it's your personal life, you may, you may not do it and that is fine. It's not the end of the world if you don't keep your own personal accounts. But when it comes to a company, it is critical that a company, small or big, keeps one of these income statements, uh, uh, keeps, keeps one of these income statements. And, and the reason for that is it, it's very helpful for founders to make, promoters to make strategic decisions on the company. Shareholders want to see what is happening in the company on a quarterly or a monthly basis and, and, and all of that. So let's say you like pizza and apart from working full time somewhere, you also run a small pizza restaurant somewhere um, down on, on, on the side. And we are going to build out a very simple income statement for your pizza restaurant. The reason I'm building this out in front of you as again showing you something already done is because I just want you to understand that it's extremely simple to build an income statement on Microsoft Excel and it's not rocket science. So let's start off. We're going to say income statement for pizza company. The name of your company is pizza company. It's not very innovative but no, pizza company for now and this is an income statement for October 2011 yeah now this is something to remember about income statement which is that an income statement is always for a specific period of time what that means is an income statement is either for a month or a quarter which is three months or six months or one year one financial year so an income statement will always give you, tell you what is happening uh, in that period of time. It's, it's, a, it's a snapshot of what happens to the company during a period of time. So what is your revenue when you, when you run a pizza company? Yeah? Your revenue is essentially a combination of two components. One is the number of pizzas sold. Yeah, let's say October 2011 is a good month for you. You have sold a thousand pizzas. Okay, that also helps us in our calculations, this thousand number. And you make really good pizzas. So your price, sorry, your price per pizza is 350 rupees. It's a pretty expensive pizza, but I think you will make good pizzas. So that's your price for pizza. So your total revenue, that is the money you have made that month, just like the salary, the one lakh, you, the company paid your salary, is nothing but the number of pizza you sold multiplied by the price per pizza. So three and a half lakhs, that is it. Just like the, the one lakh in your personal expenses, which you got as a salary, which was your income or your revenue, this is the revenue here if you run a company. Then the number of products you have sold multiplied by the price per product is your total revenue. All right, that's a fairly straightforward concept. Now, to make this pizza, what do you need? What do you need to make this pizza? You know, you, 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 you're probably thinking you need to pay rent uh, for a small restaurant or a kitchen to run the, pr to, for your, to make your pizza and all that. That is true, but then not necessarily, right? You can always make a pizza in your home and you can, you can sell it. You don't need a restaurant to make a pizza. But there, there's something more fundamental to making a pizza, which is the cost of the ingredients what goes into making the pizza right that is the cost of the ingredients so for example i'm not a chef here but i'm going to try my best uh, to attempt what goes into a pizza there is the dough the, which gives you the whole crust the thin crust thick crust chicago crust whatever the dough and let's say it costs 25 rupees per pizza for the dough so 25 to 1000 is 25000 rupees you spend on the making 1000 pizzas cheese so let's say it's about 45 rupees per pizza you spend on cheese, so 45,000 rupees on cheese. You add a nice dash of olive oil 
uh, because you price your pizza very pricely, the customer is going to expect that. And let's say olive oil is you spend 25 rupees a pizza and that's 25,000 rupees in olive oil. And let's, you know, use a bunch of vegetables, you know, you make only vegetarian pizzas. So it's 45 rupees worth of vegetables in a pizza. And I'm sorry, something happened there. 45 rupees worth in a pizza and 45 into 1000. See that mistake I just made there? That is something you need to be cognizant about when you're using Microsoft Excel. Always double check your work that you're not multiplying the wrong number, right? So, and there's probably other things here, but we're just going to sum this up. You know, we, we're going to sum this up and we say, there you go. You spend 1,40,000 in the ingredients that go into making a pizza. Now, there is a specific name in finance for the, the ingredients that are involved in making a product, and that is called cost of goods sold, or otherwise in a short form it's called COGS. Now, COGS is the first type of expense, which is the expense is it indicates all the components of the ingredients that go into making your pizza. So now you, you know, now what happens? You made three and a half lakhs in revenue and then you spend one lakh forty thousand rupees making the pizza. How much money do you have left? You have two lakh ten thousand rupees and you guess it right. In finance there is another name for that number as well. That is what is called the gross margin. Yeah, the gross margin is two lakh ten thousand rupees. You had maybe to make this easier we should probably write down the formulas here on the side so it's it's easy for uh, you to refer uh, if you need to the, the gross margin of a company is equal to revenue minus the cost of goods sold and the gross margin is essentially the amount of money that you have left over after you spend on the ingredients to make the pizza sometimes you will add in the labor costs of the uh, employees who actually made the pizza and you know all that but those are you know specific specific cases we will we'll, we'll deal with that as the session progresses as of now it's just the ingredients for pizza